Thank you for coming, everybody. My name is Scott Sigety. I am an IAKP and MFK Lyman Autoimmune Specialty Certified uh, Combo Practitioner, and I'm going to talk all things combo tonight. Unfortunately, we can't get this image any larger due to a cord issue. So if you have any questions, just ask or feel free to scoot closer. Um, so I want to thank the club, the Psychedelic Club, thanks for having me. I really want to acknowledge everything that they're doing. They're really doing some great things. They're bringing on some good speakers. And um, yeah, and thank you to the Mercury Cafe for hosting me. Um, this is one of my favorite places in Denver. And um, please order food and drink and tip your servers well. So before I talk, a few disclaimers. I am not a medical professional, I'm not a therapist, I am not, uh, I'm a practitioner, is what I am. And nothing that I chat about tonight has been evaluated or approved by the FDA, and nothing about combo is intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any disease, so I'm not making any claims here about combo curing anything. And uh, when in doubt, always consult with your physician with any in intense detox program. So now that we get that out of the way. So yeah, uh, when I was kind of feeling called to serve combo, had received it a bunch of times, feeling called to do it, I really wanted to be part of a combo community. Um, you know, there are many people that get trained in the jungle. Uh, there are people that uh, find a mentor, um, but I really wanted to be part of a community where we could learn from each other, uh, support each other, and I've been very pleased with the IAKP. <clears throat> Um, one, kind of one of the main goals of the IAKP is to really su support the sustainability of not only Combo the frog, but of the, um, the Matses who we have a partnership with. So we source all of our Combo through <clears throat> the Matses in South America. And so if you do search for a Combo practitioner, <clears throat> and you go on the IAKP website, you know that there's going to be a standard that they hold their practitioners to. Um, we go through a very intensive training program um, that not everybody passes. And so if you're being served by somebody through the IAKP, you know you're going to be served by somebody that knows what they're doing. So what is combo? There seems to be a lot of confusion out there about combo. Um, yeah, um, things I read, things I see, things I hear. Um, but before we talk about what combo is, I wanna talk a little bit about what combo is not. So combo is not a psychedelic. You will not have a psychedelic experience with combo. You may have a spiritual experience, but you will not have a psychedelic experience. Um, it sometimes gets confused with 5-MeO-DMT, the Sonoran Desert Toad, which is represented here in this beautiful piece of art. Um, but no psychedelic, no psychedelic experience with combo. Combo is not a dance that originated in Cuba, so there's no dancing with combo. Combo is not an 80s action hero, so no explosions, no guns, no, no fighting with combo. Nope. And combo is not illegal. Combo is not a scheduled drug. So let's keep it that way by being responsible. Um, yeah, just another reason to make sure that, you know, we all do our part and um, yeah, not being irresponsible with it without judgment. And then lastly, combo is not for everyone. Um, I realize that many people seek healing and I would love to help everybody, I really would, but um, first and foremost, we have to keep people safe. And I will go through some contraindications later, but combo is not for everyone. And uh, yeah, and we'll touch on that a little bit later. So the scientific name for combo is the Phylomedusa bicolor, otherwise known as the giant green monkey tree frog, um, this cute little creature. Uh, phylum meaning leaf, medusa meaning guardian. You may hear it called some other names such as sapo, daukite, kampu, kampopai, akate. And it's neighbor, native to the upper Amazon has been used by many years. We don't know, you know, hundreds, thousands. Um, 
And the size of the frogs, um, their bodies are anywhere from three and a half to four and a half inches. The females are a little bit larger. Uh, they're nocturnal and they live in trees just a few meters above the ground and don't really have any known predators. I think through time and evolution, most, uh, most other animals probably have learned the lesson, you know, eating a combo frog's just not a good idea. And what's interesting is what, when they're held in captivity, they'll continue to eat insects, but they won't produce the same secretion. So the lesson here is don't, don't take any of these animals home and put them in an aquarium. Just leave them, leave them in their natural habitat, please. So I'll go through a little history of combo. Um, it started about 100 years ago. Um, we don't have you know, an extensive documented history, but we do have a little bit of information. And it started in 1925. Uh, Father Constantine Tastevin was the first outsider to observe the use of combo while staying with the Coxinawa in Brazil. I couldn't confirm if this is him in this picture, but this is the Coxinawa tribe. And then fast forward uh, to the 80s, the 1980s. Um, Catherine Milton, I love this cute little picture of this monkey. Um, she was an American physical anthropologist and professor at UC Berkeley. And she spent 20 years studying howler and spider monkeys. And in the 80s, she recorded the accounts of use of combo while with the Mayoruna tribe from Brazil, which is basically the Matses. They're just called the Mayoruna on the other side of the border. And then around that same time, uh, Peter Gorman, who some of you may recognize that name, he was at one time the editor-in-chief at High Times Magazine, um, has written numerous articles and publications in magazines uh, domestically and internationally, um, wrote a book called Sapo in My Soul, which is a very, it's a short read, but it's a great little book on combo. And uh, in that book, you can kind of just, just, you can sense his respect for the frog um, and for the Amazon. He spent a lot of time in the Amazon. He wrote a book on ayahuasca, and he's a really interesting character. And in 1986, he was the first Westerner to document receiving combo. So as you see, I mean, that wasn't that long ago. Um, so combo is still fairly new here in the West. And then in the 90s, uh, Francisco Gomez spent many years living with the Katukina, and he was the, one of the first people to really bring combo out of the jungle um, into Brazil, and also um, started using water with combo instead of the, a lot of the indigenous tribes use um, manioc or maize soup before receiving combo, and um, because of the convenience of water, Francisco was somebody that, yeah, kind of pioneered that as well. So, traditional uses of combo. Um, now, I'm going to speak of the Matses tribe, um, who again, the IAKP has a partnership with, um, and kind of what and how they've used combo um, in their culture. Hunting. So, they will use it on the day of a hunt. They will use it to increase their stamina. They believe it helps them run longer, run faster. Uh, enhance their senses, their sight, their smell, their hearing, and uh, they also believe that it makes them, uh, re it removes the human smell, making them invisible. I wish I was invisible sometimes. Um, so yeah, for hunting. Um, now personally, like I can't imagine hunting the day of receiving combo, but they do it. They also use it to remove something called panema, which is more or less uh, negative energy, bad luck. Um, you know, we probably call it here in the West, like just being in a rut, being bummed out, <clears throat> being in a funk. Um, yeah, just a nice energetic and emotional reset to bring them out of that and to remove that negative energy that they feel is uh, they're carrying. And they also use it as a medicine. So snake bites, malaria, fevers, um, they use it uh, on children to correct bad behavior, which is really interesting. Glad my parents didn't have combo when I was a kid. Um, um, they also uh, use it, some people use it um, within the tribe to attract a mate, which is also very interesting, but it's simply part of their culture. Um, keep in mind that combo is not a shamanic medicine. So if you come across a combo shaman, they're probably full of shit. Um, so um, yeah, it's just simply part of their culture, their day-to-day -day culture. 
And as we shift to the west, we're obviously going to get the same benefits of combo, but our intentions might be a little bit different. So we're going to get the, the physical benefits. You know, it's been shown to be a potent antimicrobial, antiviral, and anti-inflammatory. Um, it's been shown to be a very potent analgesic. And um, and overall, just enhances your mood and clarity and focus, kind of like removing panema. You know, it's going to remove our panema too. Um, increased energy, um, empowered immune system, it's been shown to do. Sometimes it's referred to as the vaccine of the forest. Um, and I've seen it a lot before plant medicine retreats. So it, a lot of times it's done them on the, in the morning of perhaps like an ayahuasca experience at night. Um, personally, I don't prefer to do combo the same day as a plant medicine experience. It just, it kicks my ass. So my sweet spot is like two to three days before, but hey, if people can do it the same day, that's fantastic. Uh, in the combo community, we've also seen it work very well for addiction recovery. So um, keep in mind that if you're, if somebody is struggling with coming off a substance um, that they've struggled with an addiction, um, you have to be off for a certain period of time before receiving it. So you can't just, you know, be clean the night before and then receive combo the next day. There's a, there's a period anywhere from 48 hours up to a week. Um, but when I touch on the different peptide families of combo and how they work with opioid receptors in your brain, um, that'll explain a little bit more on how it works with addiction recovery. But we've seen some really, really amazing things in the, in the combo community. Uh, in Lyme and autoimmune disease, which I took a workshop about six months ago, focusing specifically on Lyme and autoimmune um, and how combo may help, which is, was very fascinating. And then uh, other types of treatments, such as meridian work, chakra, auricular, um, working on acupuncture points in your ears, targeting different organs, which is really interesting. Um, and also write a passage. The first time I received combo was at a men's retreat, and I had really, I didn't even heard of combo. And, you know, did a little bit of research, but um, found out real fast what it was, and it was, it was fantastic. It was exactly what I needed at the time. You know, here in the West, what do we have? 16, you get your license, and 21, you get hammered, and you feel like shit for three days. Like, um, so yeah, as a rite of passage, it can be used uh, as well. Harvesting combo. I had a good conversation with somebody before the talk, and uh, so if anybody has any questions on this, please feel free to raise your hand and chime in. Um, so again, uh, the IEKP, most of the practitioners source their combo through the Matses, through our partnership with them. We have a very strong partnership. And sourcing any uh, plant medicine or combo is extremely important and to ensure the sustainability of the tribe and the animal. So the, the method that the Matses use, and just so you all know, I have not been to the jungle yet. That is on my to-do list um, because I want to experience and see everything firsthand. Um, but traditionally what they do is because combo is a nocturnal creature, they will go out at night, they will call the frog. I won't attempt to do the combo call. And uh, the, the frog will respond and they'll go out at night with a flashlight or a headlamp and they'll break off a branch. So they don't just grab the frog out of the tree. And then what they'll do is they'll put four uprights in the ground and they'll put small strings attached to each leg and then they'll attach it to the upright. So this is usually the image that tr triggers some people, and I am very open to a conversation about this. So once they have the frog tethered, they will tap the back, the frog will secrete, they will take a piece of bamboo, and then they will dry it on a flat piece of bamboo, like this. This is the combo stick. Just pass it around. Just don't touch this, because if you get it in your eye, you're gonna regret it. <laughs> just, just touch this, the end, yeah. Thank you. Don't lick it. <laughs> um, 
So my opinion on the way they harvest it is uh, they have a very strong relationship with this animal. They've been doing this for a very long time and I don't know if it's my place to tell them how to do it. Um, now, I am hearing of other people that that's, uh, harvest combo in a different way. I actually have a uh, new relationship with somebody in South America that does it a different way, and I'm exploring that. Um, but this is how the Matseis do it. So if anybody wants to dig into this deeper after my talk, I'm more than happy to talk to you. So please approach me. Combo science. I'm not a scientist, uh, but I will go through a little bit of the combo science. Does anybody have any questions up to this point or anything that's coming up that they want to talk about? I noticed you mentioned you were saying Brazil. Oh, you were saying Brazil. Oh, they do it in Costa Rica. Um, they probably do in Costa Rica. Yeah. Peru. Peru. Um, in Brazil. Yeah, I'm sure there. Yeah, combo. There are combo frogs in Costa Rica as well. Yes. Anybody else? Yeah. So they tap the back, and it secretes. So it'll secrete. It's poison, and then a, a piece of bamboo off its back. They'll just take it and gently scrape it off its back, and then they'll dry it on a flat piece of bamboo, and then in order to serve the combo you need to wet the combo stick, and then you scrape it up into little balls, which I'll touch on a little bit later. Well, I'm assuming the frog is not harmed in this process? The release and correct, correct. So after they, after they take the secretion, they bring the, the frog back out into the jungle. And what's also interesting is the string that they put around its leg, it leaves a little mark for about 30 days. So if for some reason they were to come across that same frog when they're harvesting, they won't touch it. They'll let it replenish its secretion and they'll move on. How often do they harvest it? Um, the same frog, I would say a little over a month between. You know, I don't know how common it is to like run into the same frog in the jungle, but, but the string, when they tie it, the string does leave a little mark on its leg for, they say for about 30 days. So they won't harvest it again if they see that in a frog. So a little combo science, I won't bore you with a lot of science. Uh, I'm not a scientist, but we will touch on it. So it all started with Vittorio Erzheimer. He was an Italian pharmacologist and chemist. Um, he was actually the, the person who discovered serotonin in 1935. Um, nominated for a Nobel Prize a couple times. And in 1986, uh, Peter Gorman, going back to Peter Gorman, Peter Gorman sent a sample to Vittorio and he was blown away. Up to that point, Vittorio had done a lot of work in studying on uh, amphibian poisons. So he was very familiar with uh, the health benefits in humans and different amphibians. Um, and he was the person that identified the main peptide families in combo. And his quote was, well, one of his quotes was that combo is a fantastic chemical cocktail of potential medical applications unequaled by any other amphibian. Now, I have a prize I want to give away. Does anybody want to? I have. <laughs> so does anybody know, okay, raise your hand if you know this. Does anybody know what, uh, so Vittorio discovered serotonin in 1935. Does anybody know what serotonin was called before it was called serotonin? Anybody? Anybody? What serotonin was called before? It wasn't originally called serotonin? It starts with an E? Nope. Nope. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. I'll, I'll save this for another question there. It's uh, enteramine. Enteramine. Yes. All right, so several of the combo peptides have been isolated and synthesized. Um, and right now there are currently over 70 patents on uh, synthetic combo analogs. Um, what's really baffling to me is that there really hasn't been any human research done on combo 
um, specifically. Like, there have been pharmaceutical companies that have isolated these different peptides and studied them and patented them, but no studies really on combo is the entire secretion with all the peptides, which is, now maybe that's a good thing, you know, keep the pharmaceutical companies out of this and just let us do what we do. Um, but yeah, kind of puzzling. Here are the eight peptide families found in combo. Now keep in mind that there are tons of peptides in combo, but here are the eight main peptides. And I'll read these because I know it's probably hard to read, and yellow probably wasn't the best color to choose for the font. Um, the dermorphins and the deltorphins uh, have opioid effects. So going back to withdrawal, um, addiction withdrawal, and um, how combo can be beneficial. Um, these are the two peptides that are probably doing the biggest work with helping in that way. Um, they do work with the opioid receptors in the brain and um, they're found in combo. So again, in the combo community, we're finding that the uh, many people are finding relief with addiction withdrawal, withdrawal which is fantastic. Then you have the phylocerulins and sabagine, which have potent gastrointestinal and some vascular effects. Uh, but it's really the phylomedusin and phylokinins that have the most potent vasodilation effects, potent vasodilators. And then the last two, the latorins, which are very strong um, on the gastrointestinal thermoregulation effect, and dermoceptins, which are very strong antimicrobial and um, anti-cancerous, not claiming this cures cancer, but it's shown positive results on cancer cells. Um, so that's, those are the eight main peptide families in combo. Any questions on those? No? But what is a peptide? A peptide's basically a short chain of amino acids, so our bodies recognize these and our cells open up and we're able to uh, receive them very efficiently. And I, it, the science part would not be complete without mentioning Caitlin Thompson. Uh, Caitlin was the person that taught the Lyman autoimmune workshop last year. And Caitlin, when she, was, when she found combo, she was struggling with a lot of different health issues, um, some being autoimmune. And she happened to have a science background. So as she found relief and healing with combo, from all of her physical uh, ailments, um, she dove in head first. And what was really baffling um, was that as she tried to publish combo studies, she had doors slammed on her face and people hanging up the phone on her and just like resistance time and time again. But she, she persevered and uh, a couple months ago she had her first combo study published. So congratulations to Caitlin. And I believe that she just had her second one published about a week ago. So she's doing really incredible things in the combo community. I want to give her a ton of credit. Um, and she's just, a, she's just a really great person. Uh, and the name of the study that was published is Use of Phylomedusa Bicolor Secretion During Combo Ritual, Observational Responses, Dosage, and Risk of Adverse Events. Okay. The ceremony. Now, I'm not gonna like try to create expectations for anybody here, um, but what I do want to do is just give you an idea of what's involved in a combo ceremony. Um, is anybody who here has received combo? Okay, good amount of people. Good, good. All right. Who here has? Well, if you're here, you probably have some interest or curiosity, right? So I'll kind of go through just a little bit of what happens in a combo ceremony. Again, not creating any expectations for anybody. But before I do, here's a part, this is, these are some of the contraindications. So when somebody comes to me for combo, they go through a fairly thorough phone call. Um, intake where we go over their health history, we go over their medications um, to really determine whether or not they're a ca candidate to receive combo. And you know, I, I really bums me out when I have to turn people away, but I, I need to keep people safe first and foremost. Uh, 
So here are some of them. Um, and the nice thing about being in a combo community with other practitioners is that um, we're learning still. I mean, we're learning. Um, and if somebody comes across something that's new, we can share it with the community and we can put it out there and right away, then it's, we add it to the list. The most recent one was the esophagus bleeding or rupture, which uh, is mostly, it's the most common with people that have had like damage their, to their esophagus and, um, or maybe have suffered from bulimia. Um, but yeah, we, this is something that we discovered within the last year was, um, you know, any kind of history of esophagus issues, um, more than likely you're not going to be a candidate for a combo. So before you get combo, there I work with a couple of other um, substances, and the first one is called Sananga. Who here has used Sananga? Who here likes Sananga? <laughs> I love Sananga, what are you talking about? Um, yeah, so Sananga comes from the shredded root um, of a shrub in South America, which is part of the Iboga family. Now, you're not gonna have an iboga experience um, putting these drops in your eyes. Um, that may bum some of you out, but, um, but you will feel it, it burns. So these are eye drops, and in this setting, they're used to ground you, bring you into your body, and prepare you to receive combo. So it's, again, it's a very potent eye drop, you lay on your back, you close your eyes, I put a drop in each corner, and then when I ask you to open and flutter, you open up, and that's when the fun begins. And it's, again, a very intense burning. Um, it's hard to explain, but afterwards, you're grounded, you feel good. I absolutely love it. I've had experiences where my hands have vibrated, which is really crazy. Um, but it also has some physical benefits, too. It's used for glaucoma, cataracts, astigmatism, um, eye infections, um, so you get some health benefits as well. I know one person that did a, a 30 day Sananga protocol and he said that he didn't have to use readers anymore, which is really interesting. And then the second substance I work with, uh, I can't really say medicines because, and then I'm kind of making a claim, so I'm gonna say substance. Um, the second one is uh, rape or hape, uh, sacred tobacco or sacred tobacco snuff. Um, I need to give away a prize, so, um, okay, somebody please get this, okay, um, who knows what the name of this pipe being used is called? That's all your hand first. Ah, close. You got it? Tepe. 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 <laughs> Tepe. T-E-P-I. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, rape. Hape, rape. Um, it's a sacred tobacco snuff, and the base of all rape is Nicotinia rustica. It's a uh, sacred tobacco. Um, and it comes in many different blends. So. Some of it's mixed with other leaves, some of it's mixed with ash, some of it's mixed with um, the flowers is used sometimes in it. And um, the darker the blend, the stronger the tobacco content. So when I serve this to people, um, you know, I determine what I give them based on their, their history with, uh, with Hape. If they've used it before, if they're sensitive to tobacco, and um, yeah, it's beautiful for grounding, for clearing negative energy. So Sananga, then the Rabe, and that will put you in a very good place to be ready for a combo. And it also settles your nerves because, you know, it's, if you don't anything about combo, you're gonna be a little nervous going into it. So it's a nice way to ground. Is it, is, is it related to Mupacho at all? It is. Yeah, it's the same, that's the, in most cases, the tobacco that they use for a, a base, yeah. Nicotinia rustica. So, types of treatments. Um, 
So yeah, I already talked about how you know we do chakra, auricular, meridian work. Um, but if it's your first time, it's going to be a basic treatment. And a basic treatment consists of three to five points, um, usually done in a vertical line. Um, yeah, three to five. Uh, layered is used for people that are maybe in a weakened state and can't really handle like a full punch of combo. So it's applied gradually over the 15 to 20 minutes. Um, it's still usually a purgative experience, um, not always, um, but a layered treatment is, is good for, you know, people that just physically can't handle it all. There are three by three initiations which this picture here, it might be hard to see, but this was me after my training and my three by three initiation was very difficult. It was very, very, it was one of the most difficult things I've done. It really made me feel like I was worthy to serve combo and it removed any fear I had of combo because combos can be scary, like it's strong stuff and um, even going into my training, and I'd done it a bunch of times, like, I still, like, had some fear. Um, but after that, zero fear. Um, and there are people that uh, request three by threes. I mean, not often. Um, you can do, uh, you know, a three day in a row, uh, but a three by three is three ceremonies in three hours. Um, intensive treatments, which are usually done for people that are suffering from like a really major health issue. Um, there are people that have come to us with cancer. Um, again, not making any claims that it cures it, but there are people that if, they, if they're able to get through the screening, um, we can serve people. And uh, HIV, herpes, name it. You know, like, really any kind of long-term serious health issue. Um, some people request intensives, and that's usually anywhere from three days in a row to two weeks in a row. Um, it can be a, a two by two um, over a, each day over a weekend, so a lot of different ways that an intensive can work. Um, but that's a commitment, like an intensive is a commitment. Uh, and then microdosing, which I recently started doing back in December when I got sick. Um, more than likely it was COVID. I started microdosing myself every day. And uh, it helped, it really helped a lot. I noticed a difference in my immune system. My friend who gave me whatever it was I had, um, she was sick for at least a week after I was and I was microdosing and she wasn't. So just some different types of treatment um, that, uh, that are options. But if it's your first time, it's gonna be a basic treatment. Burning the gates. Yes, there's burning involved. So um, the gates are burned, and this is where we apply the combo. Uh, and it's done with either a Tamishi vine, which this is, or an incense stick. And it's a real quick just touch and flick on your skin. So it's real fast, real fast. And it's really just used to remove the top layer of the skin to apply the combo. And then the combo, when it's placed on there, it goes into your lymphatic system. So real quick and easy, three to five gates for your first basic treatment. Um, and traditionally, traditionally, so speaking of the matzes, like traditionally it's placed on the upper left arm of men, lower right leg of women. Uh, in a vertical line, although I always consult with people, you know, are you feeling called to receive it somewhere else? That, that's, that's cool. And, um, you know, I, instead of like a, a, a straight line, we could do a triangle, we could do a square. If you're doing a lot of points, if it's not your first time, we can do all sorts of cool designs, we do a circle. But that's, traditionally, it's uh, done in a vertical line. And then, it's time to drink some water. And I kind of touched on earlier how some of the indigenous tribes will drink like a soup that consists of manioc or maize um, beforehand to help induce the purge. We use water. So after the gates are burned, uh, the person will be drinking one and a half to two liters in about a 15 minute time period. Now the water intake is where you can really run into trouble. Um, I, the, a guy that I was in training with almost died because he was at a music festival and the, the practitioner that 
he was being served by had him drink too much water. And hyponatremia is real, you can die. I mean, you're, yeah, you know, your electrolytes and your sodium, your sodium levels become dangerously diluted and the, the outcome is not good. And thankfully his buddy convinced him to um, eat something or drink some Gatorade and probably saved his life. But yeah, I mean, if the water is monitored, um, there's, no, there's no issues, uh, no, no issues at all. So one and a half to two liters in 15 minutes, and this helps induce the purge and helps bring up some of these things that Combo's working out. Um, you know, there's some herxine that can take place, which is the die off of certain fungi and bacteria um, throughout your body, um, and this is gonna help bring it up. And then as you're drinking the water, um, the combo stick, uh, we apply water to the combo stick and scrape it up into these little points. And these will be placed on the gates that I burned. So that's, uh, that's four points there. Yes, that is my hand. And uh, if it's your first time, uh, you'll get a test point. So I'll apply one point um, just to see if you have any like weird, unusual reaction, which I haven't seen, but just as, again, safety first. Um, and leave, I leave that on for about five minutes, and if nothing weird happens, then I put the rest of it on. Haven't seen anything weird happen yet. So once it's on, it doesn't take long. Uh, you're gonna start feeling flush, your heart rate's gonna crank up, and then actually your blood pressure drops after a, a bit of time. Um, you'll get nausea, you'll s just feel internal discomfort, um, tingling in your extremities. Some people may shake, um, some people may cry. Purging can be done in a lot of different ways. Um, but yeah, purging, purging. Um, uh, fainting is not unusual because it does lower your blood pressure. Uh, I've had a few clients faint and it's perfectly fine. Um, and that's why it's also important to have somebody that knows what they're doing serving you because you can also faint going to the bathroom, which I've had done to have experience as well. Um, yeah, so, you know, not to keep preaching about um, finding a good practitioner, but yeah, I mean, somebody, anybody can serve you combo, but if something goes wrong, they may not know what to do. Um, fainting and uh, froggy face. And that is where your, fro your face kind of puffs up and it's temporary, it goes away. Um, but speaking of froggy face, um, I can't believe I'm gonna show this picture, but this is, um, <laughs> this is me in Peru a couple years ago. No, I did not lose a street fight. Um, it's pretty hideous, I did not Photoshop it. Um, very vulnerable picture of me there. Uh, that was Peru two years ago, and, and that was uh, that was a rough one, and uh, and I don't think my face is still swollen, so it did return to normal at some point. Um, yeah, it happens, and sometimes you get it. You know, it's worse than other times, um, but it does happen. So you usually have the combo on for about twenty to twenty-five minutes. Um, but it's really depend, depends on where you are in your experience. I had one, one uh, a friend of mine that I served and he did 40 minutes and that was a rough one, but it's so uh, 20 to 40 minutes. On average, it's about 25 minutes. And then if you're kind of through your process um, and you've gotten what you're gonna get out of it, I remove the combo and then it's time to apply the dragon's blood, otherwise known as sangre de drago. I just like saying that. Um, and it comes from a tree sap, uh, the croton lecleri tree, which is native to South America. Um, and it just really helps seal that, the, the gate that I burn. Uh, it also is a very potent analgesic, um, and it really helps with the inflammation and the healing. Uh, and it's interesting as I was putting together this slideshow is that it contains phosphine, which has um, been implicated in cancer research, which I want to dig into further. Um, and it's also used as a mouthwash for bleeding of the gums, ulcerations, tooth infections. Some people like swish it around their mouth. Uh, I haven't been that brave yet, but then again, I haven't had a tooth infection, um, but it's good to know. So that's that applied to the gates and then uh, it just kind of flakes off at that point.
So, and then after the Dragon's Blood, um, how I hold my ceremonies, then, you know, there's some integration there. You know, we spend some time talking if somebody wants to share. You know, I serve you fruit and tea and give you some love. Um, but here are a few testimonials of some people. And usually about three days after a ceremony, I'll follow up with somebody just to see how they're feeling. And many times I get a response like this. And this is really what makes doing this fulfilling is hearing people how great they feel and what combo has done for them. And uh, yeah, it's, it's incredible. And here's another one. This was a couple that came up from Texas and did a three day intensive. They did a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And this one was the first person I served after my training and she just happens to be my niece too. So it was a very special experience for both of us. So yeah, just really positive. Uh, it's usually two to three days later is when you're gonna really start feeling the positive effects of combo. Um, yeah, the day of, I get my ass kicked. I don't wanna do anything other than lay down. Um, some people are different, but yeah, it's usually two to three days later is really when you're gonna feel the, the full effects. And I found a meme, I think, that kind of sums it all up really good. Uh, I think this, this is it. I don't know if you can see this, <laughs> but um, you know, before a combo, you're scared and nervous and during, you're kind of in another place just trying to survive, and then afterwards, you're totally empowered, but hopefully you're, you don't flick me off. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, combo is a very, it's a, it's a warrior medicine, and it's a very powerful substance, and um, it's empowering. When you get through a combo experience, um, you feel, you physically feel good, usually, emotionally, and, but it's, it's, Getting through it just does something for you, and it's really hard to explain if you haven't experienced it. But um, yeah, that sums it up nicely. Mm -hmm. Can you describe a little bit more of the feeling? I mean, you described the negative effects, but like, what does it feel like when you're going through this? <sighs> that, 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 <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's very I mean, challenging. It's not psychedelic, so you're not having visuals or anything. It feels like you're being poisoned. Yeah, yeah, it's very challenging. Yeah, so all those things that were listed up there, yeah, it's it's challenging. It's very challenging, and um, that's why I never, uh, I never, uh, someone has to feel called to sit with combo. And if they don't, I'm not going to try to talk anybody into it. Um, if anything, if they're not absolutely 100% sure, I will say you probably should wait. Um, but yeah, it's physically, emotionally, mentally, it's very challenging. And, um, but it's, it's worth it. Yeah, it's very worth it. So you get the after effects like a day or so afterwards? Yeah, and everybody's a little different. Um, for me, it's two to three days later. Um, yeah, usually the day of, you're just, you're worn out. Um, because physically it's so taxing that um, it takes a couple days kind of to, you know, replenish, you know, your food and water and sodium and, um, yeah, in most cases, I mean, I've had combo experiences too, um, when I was in my training where 20 minutes after I was like up and running around, but then again, I was doing combo a lot. Um, but yeah, it's usually two to three days later and it's, um, you know, everybody's results are different. Um, most people like the, the testimonials that I displayed. That's usually what I get, is people feeling really good a few days after. And, you know, sometimes it lasts a couple weeks, sometimes it lasts several months. Um, personally, I like to do kind of a quarterly combo tune-up, I call it, where I serve myself every three or four months. Um, and it helps. It just help, it helps my immune system. It helps me mentally, energetically. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anybody? Oh. Yeah, so I noticed with the dragon's blood, it was made from uh, latex compound. So if you were like allergic to latex, would you advise maybe skipping that step? Or? That is a very good question. That is a good question. Um, possibly. Yeah, possibly. 
And thank you for asking that because now I have something to look into. Yes, thank you. Uh, he asked if, some, if somebody has a latex allergy, if they should receive dragon's blood after. Yeah. I haven't, in my combo community, I haven't heard that ever brought up, but thank you. I'll look into it more. Does it matter where you talk about you can get the combo placement on your arm or your leg or not to then occur the back as well in response? Does it matter like does it change the impact of the substance? If it's your first time receiving it, um, I won't do like a chakra or a regular. Um, so, so if it's your first time, typically it's on your upper left arm. Uh, because when you start working with chakras and placing on chakras, it's a, it can be a very different experience. It can be much more challenging. Um, or if you work with uh, like different meridian points on your body. Um, I had one experience where I did a liver meridian. I don't sweat easily. And I did a liver meridian point and one point on my liver meridian and I was like pouring sweat. So, um, so yeah, you can place it on different areas of your body. Even your first time you could place it on a different area. I would just make sure it wasn't on a chakra or a specific meridian. It does, it does matter. It does, yes. And also, if it's closer to your heart, you will feel the effects faster than if it's on your lower leg. You're still going to get the experience, but it's just going to take a few more minutes to kind of feel it. I have a combo stick right here. You want to do it right now? No. <laughs> uh, I have a card um, right there. Otherwise, you can talk to me after. Yeah. How local are you? About two and a half miles from here. Yeah, yeah. Nice and close. Yeah. Anybody else? Do you do this in a commercial space or do you do it right in your home? My home. Great question. That's the million dollar question. Yeah. Um, for me, I can speak for myself. It's about intention. Um, not everybody can go to the jungle. A lot of people need healing. And for me, um, approaching it in a sacred manner, having respect, giving back to the communities that provide us the, the medicine, the secretion, which Another reason why I'm really happy I'm with the IAKP is because we have a partnership with the Matses. We give back to the Matses. I personally give back to the Matses. So, yeah, for me, it's all about intention. Yeah, but that's a great question, and that's like, like the plant medicines too. It's like, yeah, yeah. Thank you for asking that, though. How do you source the medicine since it's so hard to get? Uh, we have a partnership with the Matsuyas tribe in South America, and so they source all of it for us, um, and then we have one person in the States that orders it, and then we order it from her, and then the IKP as well as most of the practitioners, if not all the practitioners, give back to the tribe uh, individually as well. specific medical condition that they were referring to? No, it's just like if, if I were to say get a medical condition in the future, 
future, I wouldn't want to have camp out now and fear that it might lose tolerance. But that might not be true too. So. Yeah, I've never heard that. Okay. Yeah, I think you're gonna get the benefit of combo and its peptides regardless. I have some hoppy to give away, but I don't know. I didn't have a third question to ask, so. <laughs> um, does anybody here regularly use rape? Okay, a few. Hmm. Katie, can you think of a question? Okay, wait, should we have a test question on combo? <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, what is the size of a female combo frog? Okay, I, I think she had her hand up. Well, well, no, I, what was it? <laughs> okay. Well, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, do you? Do you? You got it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Good job. Congratulations. I was just gonna throw up in here at some point. We could all wrestle for it. And have a hoppe pinata or something. Here. Um. So, who has the boombox for the after party? Anybody? Bring the boombox. So that is it. Um, hopefully, that was helpful and you learned something about combo and. Uh, this is the first time I've given this presentation, so thank you all for coming. I really do appreciate the turnout, and um, this was fun putting this together, and I hope to do it again with another group at some point, and um, feel free to reach out. My cards are over here, or I'll hang around as long as there are people wanting to ask questions, and um, yeah, feel free to reach out, even if you're like mildly curious about it, um, yeah, or have a concern, you know, if you want to talk about harvesting combo or anything else. Um, yeah, I'm open. Does it have um, any benefit for like long-term chronic illnesses like diabetes or something like that? It has been shown to have many benefits for a lot of different chronic illnesses, um, specifically diabetes, I don't know. Um, but uh, chronic issues, yes, specifically diabetes. Uh, what was the other one? Hypertension. Hypertension, mm, possibly. Yeah, I've heard. I've I've seen a little bit on hypertension in the community, um, and really, it's a yeah. I mean, again, we're learning, and and you know, so many people are being called to combo because they don't want to take a bunch of different pharmaceuticals, and um, so as this whole area moves forward and more people start using it, we're going to learn more on specific issues that it's good for. Um, but it's been amazing seeing uh, within the IKP community like how many people have been helped with this. It's really mind-blowing. Um, Yeah, I, what I can say is that there have been a lot of people that have used combo um, that have had COVID and have had good success. Um, specifically long COVID, like I don't, I'm not familiar with the different types of COVID, um, but um, yeah, I've seen like in our uh, online community, many people were requesting combo because they, they don't want to use other other uh, medicines, like Western medicines. I microdosed when I more than likely had, I didn't get tested, but I'm pretty sure I had COVID. And I was kind of riding the wave, like I never really got super sick. I was like, I felt crummy and then I microdosed and I come down and I kind of did this for like two weeks. I had about a day and a half where I did feel bad, but I had mentioned earlier my friend um, was you know, and I know everybody is different, but uh, my friend was, which gave me COVID, was much more sick than I was. And I just felt it. Like when I microdosed, you know, you're getting those peptides in your system to boost your immune system. Like I felt it. I felt the difference. And it carried me through a lot of my days where I felt like shit in the morning and then I microdosed and it was like I, I got through the day and I could feel the difference. I 
ideally it's like half a gate. It's hard to burn half a gate, um, but it's microdosing is not a purgative experience. So you have it on for 30 minutes. Um, you just you just need to fast for like two to three hours. So you're not you're not doing the water. You're not doing the sananga and the hape. Um, the microdosing is more just to get some peptides in your system as a nice little immune system boost. Um, and so it's like a real like ideally half a gate and then you just have it on for a half hour. You'll still feel some warmness and flushing, but yeah, you're not gonna be purging and fainting and getting a froggy face. Yeah. So after the purge happens, what then? Then you feel better. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, you're not, so on average it's like 20 to 25 minutes, but you're not purging the whole time, but you're purging quite a bit of the time. Um, yeah, uh, once once the combo is removed, um, then you start to kind of come down. Um, but yeah, that that purge feels well. I think it feels good. Get rid of it. Um, yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure I had COVID twice already, and the first time had a lot of long hours effects for a good year. They were kind of getting better, and then I got it, knocked with it again last October. Mm -hmm. And the one long hauler effect I've had the whole time is this excessive acid reflux. Not pain, but excessive acid coming up, a lot of saliva it feels like. Would that rule me out of doing it, or would combo actually maybe help that? Acid reflux would not disqualify disqualify you from receiving combo. Yeah. I think it could, could probably help it. It might. Yeah, it might. Yeah. As long as, you know, as long as you're maybe you know trying some other things like diet and oh, yeah. alkaline and, yeah, yeah okay okay yeah it could be related to uh, thinking a hiatal hernia i'm investigating that right now i haven't been diagnosed um, with it but i understand that's a fairly common malady people have mm. that's a reflux that may, may help yeah because it does i mean it, it goes through your whole system and um yeah maybe Tune up? Sometimes. Sometimes people do it once and they never do it again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, some people do it once a year, some people do it quarterly. Um, I don't think anybody does it daily. Um, but yeah, I mean, I. I've been doing it long enough now to where I'm getting some people coming back for their, you know, I'm seeing some six month uh, tune ups. Um, yeah. You're welcome. So, this is a, it's obviously a self defense mechanism for the frog. If you simply handle the frog, is it possible you have a combo experience? Just, I'm just curious about. Um, the poison is obviously meant as a deterrent, but obviously it's what creates the effect. The effect. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious. Just I was just curious about that. Are you asking if you? Oh no! I mean, I'm not saying that. I'm just curious. That yeah. I mean, simply handling the frog it seems to be with their poison either or or ingestion would it would get in your system. If you had it on your hand and touch your eye or yeah. touch your mouth, and I've gotten a little in my eye. Once, and yeah, yep, that, that will happen, yes, okay. yeah, not not good. I'm curious to ask, what, how much is, what, how much do you charge for a basic dose? You can, we can talk after, or you can shoot me a message, yeah, because I do try to work with everybody to make sure it's affordable for everybody, yes. Is that it? Yeah. Would you say that a person that doesn't really have any issues going on, but is curious about the benefits of combo, would be a candidate to do it, and perhaps just kind of rejuvenate or boost? Yes. Yeah, it it can really do wonders for your immune system. I have found, and I have seen 
for your immune system and just an overall sense of well-being. So yes, you're welcome. I'm guessing 300 globally. Um, there are only a couple here in Denver. And um, yeah, they're all over. Um, but about 300. And it's growing. Like they have trainings a couple times a year. Yeah. And if I didn't mention it before, yeah, not everybody going through the training finishes. Like not everybody gets certified because. If you don't complete your three by three initiation and you don't make it through, then it's it's tough. Um, it's not an easy thing to complete. Yeah. So again, they hold their practitioners to a very high standard, so you know what you're getting when you're with an IKP practitioner. Detoxing? Yes. Yeah, very strong detox. Yeah, very strong. With well, with combo, you can you can feel both. Um, it's such a call it a smorgasbord of body bodily sensations. Um, yeah, um, while you're in it, usually you're going to be very warm. Like, while you're in your experience, uh, very warm. Um, and then afterwards, you may be very cold after the combo comes off. And, you know, and some of that shivering may be purging. It may be just your body temp. It's, yeah, it's just, a, I mean, you're going through a lot during the whole process. Scary picture, huh? How long usually it takes for it to like to Usually a few hours, yeah. Yeah. Although I heard a story of there was a female that um, I was told was very into her looks and she did combo and she freaked out when she had a uh, froggy face and <laughs> For some reason, her froggy face lasted like a day, like way longer than normal. And I'm oh. like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> but usually a few hours. Okay. So, can you tell us a little bit more about the quickly um, like other things that I work with um, like plant medicines it's for me it's all about developing a relationship with it and feeling called to do it and feeling called to serve it um, and I went into after doing it several times I was thinking about it and I went into a combo ceremony with the intention of show me if this is something that I should be doing if I should be serving and I got my answer there been deaths with combo? Yes. And again, that's why it's very important to sit with somebody that's experienced. Um, from what I know about the deaths that have occurred, it has been mostly water related. And there was a case of someone, um, a man that had served himself and they found him. So I don't know what happened there. Um, but yeah, and it's, it, it's, it's, it can be dangerous, yeah. yeah. And not only with the water, you know, suffering from hyponatremia, but um, if, you, if you don't know that it's a, that you should be, uh, if, if you don't know contraindications, if you don't know that something may be putting you at risk or putting somebody else at risk, yeah. Because anybody can get a combo stick on Etsy, and I'm not judging anybody that does that, it's just, if you do it on yourself, that's one thing, but if you're serving others and you don't know what you're doing, that's another. Yeah. Well, 
last call. I don't have any more prizes. <laughs>